All right, so the title should be self-evident. Um, I'm going to try not to let this take up too much time. I want to get this out here and allow you to listen to it in the background. This is why I'm not going to be on camera directly. But um, here it goes. So there's been all kinds of stories coming out about Zach Levine. Look, I'm not going to get into that. I would assume that you guys are already caught up on all of that, but if not, I could do a separate video to bring you up to speed. Um, here's the deal, right? If you're at the viewpoint that you want to trade Zach Levine, I get it. It's not a wrong take to have, but it's the wrong take to have. Here's the thing. Right now, his value is incredibly low, so you're not going to get as much for him anyway. And if you're the Bulls and you see what, you know, these Gafford and these other players are doing that used to be on the Bulls, it just doesn't make sense whatsoever. Um, like... The last thing you want to do is to trade another player who goes to another team, is productive and successful, and it's like, damn, you know, you already lost Laurie, you already lost Gafford, you know, some of these other guys I'm not going to mention, um, but they're ex-Bulls, and this is where you're at. All these guys you let go, just go to other teams and they're contributing. Like, you can't, you can't jack this up. So here's the thing, and yes, I'm going to include Lonzo in this because this is necessary for my viewpoint, so bear with me for a second. Zoe allegedly could play right now. He says he's 70%. He's able to play uh, if he could play, you know, if they were playing games right now. Cool. Uh, but we already knew they weren't going to let him play. Granted, it doesn't matter. We're in the finals time right now, so it, it's irrelevant. He expects to play game one of the new season. Zach Levine has been at his best with a point guard like Lonzo Ball. Given that Zach Levine was hurt and had his injury concerns and has been, has wanted out, but he has no value, If you, at least if you're wanting to trade him, if that's the idea you have, you need to go ahead and let him play next to Zoe. Let him get that value up. Um, worst case scenario... His value can't get any lower. Best case scenario, he turns into what he was prior to DeRozan and everybody else getting there. And now, you know, you can get top dollar for him. Okay? It, it just makes way more sense to let that happen. Um, not just that, but... There's also the possibility you could convince him to stay, especially if he has one of those seasons where he's putting up like 27 points a game on like 54% shooting and 40 from three. If he's having one of those type of seasons, he'll be an all-star, maybe even all-star starter, and you can go from there. It's, it's better to just play it out. Worst case scenario, if he's still sucking by then, and if Lonzo can't help bring him up out of that, Lonzo is an attractive contract because it'll fall off after that season. And you could maybe couple them together and see if you can, you know, get something out of it. You might say, oh, well, if Lonzo is not having a good season too, then, you know, nobody's going to want, okay, fine. But I'm that surgery he had from what I've seen, and what I've been told will lead to him having pretty much the same limitations he had prior. Well, let me not say limitations, but he'll be at about the same level he was when he first went out. So if that's the case, I still expect more of the same. Besides, that injury is not going to affect the things that he already did well. Shoot pass in defense um, and rebound at a high level. Main things that you can expect, the main things that will be back. If you think his defense will suffer, fine. He was like first team, second team defense level. If you think he's going to fall off a cliff like that, he might as well not even play ball. But he's still young. I don't think that's the case.
But let's put that to the side. The main point is, I think you guys got it wrong about let's get Zach up out of here. It just makes no sense, especially given everything else. And I get it. Kobe White, he had a very good season. Very good season. Um, there's no reason why you can't play all three of them, especially because, and this is why it's, it's important you got to look at the coach you have. Billy Donovan likes his three guards. Bam. Especially if you, because DeMar's contract is up. If you don't want to bring them back, or if you decide to do a sign of trade to get some other assets, which they should, uh, if, like, if literally, if you're going to trade anyone, DeMar has the most value. Well, it's either him or Caruso. But, and I would do a sign of trade for Caruso too, as a matter of fact. Um, but I have no problem keeping Caruso. But anyway, if you're going to trade anybody, it probably should be DeMar first. And then you could just slot Zach at the three and then just play um, Zoe and Kobe. Really, it wouldn't matter because Zoe is going to guard the, the three most likely. And you'll probably have Zach or whoever the worst person is. And then Kobe can guard the other person. That's likely the the flow of it anyway. On offense, Zoe's point guard. And it doesn't matter. Those two are going to be on the wings. But that's your best option if you wanted to trade him. Now, <clears throat> if you're of the viewpoint that I am, that his skill set will pop, here's ultimately what you're looking at. If Zach and Zell perform because Kendall Gill, I don't know if you guys remember, went before training camp started that year, and he, well, it was during training camp, he had time to sit there and watch them. He said they may be the best backcourt in the league. And I'm going to be honest, the only ones I had put above them were the ones that had continuity or the ones that just had these superstar talents. You know, the Kyrie Hardens, you know, the CP3 Bookers, like the, like those, the Splash Brothers. Those are the only ones I put above them. I'm going to tell you right now, if you go look at the landscape of the league, it's not a bunch of, like, backcourts that's godly like that. And it's not as many backcourts to have that kind of versatility and that youth. I would put my money... And this is just me. If we're assuming Zoe is going to be back at 100%, it can play, it can do everything, I put my money on that Bulls backcourt. Uh, stats for you guys that care about that kind of thing. Um, at the time before, when Zoe actually left the lineup due to the injuries a couple years ago, the, the team was taking 28 threes a game, which is kind of low, but they were efficient. They were making 42% of those. That would be good for 12 a, a game. Of the 12 that they made, Zach and Zoe counted for half. So, yes, of that 12, the six came from Zach and Zoe. Uh, Zoe hit about 3.1 a game, and I think Zach Levine was either like 2.9 or right at 3, which is still six. But that's your backcourt, providing that spacing, firing off those threes, and complementing each other's skill sets. You want to talk about what their skill sets is. I kind of already mentioned what Zoe's is. Zach is basically a three-tier score, really two. Uh, but he gets he makes his money attacking the rim with his athleticism and his shooting ability from range. Okay? Um, if you want to go through the things that they don't do well, Zoe is not the isolation score, nor is he your traditional uh, pick-and-roll point guard. Um, Zach Levine tunnel vision with the ball, dribbles the air out of the ball, uh, he's a ball stopper, okay? You fix that by putting the ball in Zoe's hands and letting him dictate what the offense is going to be and make the and setting the plays, and then you get Zach the ball with the options to do one of three things. Shoot, attack, or pass. That's it. If you, gotta, if you make him do anything else, he's going he's gonna to mess it up for you. That's why he needs a point guard. He needs someone to feed him the ball, which is also feeding his ego. Okay? That's your backcourt. All that spacing they're going to provide, which also helped DeMar have that year that he has, that he had. Like, he hasn't performed well because the Bulls have had very little spacing. They don't have the shooters. You get both of them on the court. You got all that extra space in the mid range to work with. They can't leave. They can't leave off of either of them because they're gonna get cooked. So Demar has all the space in the world to work and do his thing. It, it's that simple. That's literally like the basis of it. Why would you want them as your backcourt? Again, the spacing they provide. 
okay? They already have the other things as far as, like, the complementary skill sets that play off of each other. But the other thing is those passing. When you're trying to run, you need athletes. What is that? An athlete works together, okay? Everybody remembers the play where they were playing the Mavericks. My Mavericks, ironically, in the finals. Shout-outs to the Mavs. Uh, Shout-outs to Kyrie, by the way. Uh, and that's a whole other thing. I could go off on a tangent about the crap that happened with him the last couple of years, but I ain't going to go there. Um, but everybody remembers the play. Um, Dallas takes a shot. Mrs. Caruso gets the ball, gives to Vooch. Vooch gives to Zozo. Threads the needle between Luca and I think it was Maxi Kleba to Zach Levine. 360 dunk. Get mad, Zach. Get mad. And he goes off on the ref because the play before he got fouled, I believe he was attacking the rim. He got fouled. They didn't call it. He was hitting his head. He went off on the ref and he got the tech. Yes, I remember that entire sequence. So we we seen what they could do. That's just like an aspect. We've seen the passes that Zoe made when you got DeMar beating guys down the court and getting open, got easy layups. Come on, man. It, it helps your role players. That That's the reason why, okay? If you think that you're going to get Patrick Williams back and Kobe and they're going to be these guys, you want these young legs to go run it down the court and get these easy buckets, okay? Easy buckets is a godsend. If you're thinking Pat can shoot these threes at 40% in the corner and you got Kobe that can shoot the three and, and Zoe and Zach, well, there you go. You got at least a lineup that can put up 35 threes a game and actually knock them, knock them down. Part of the reason the Bulls were winning games a couple years ago and they weren't taking as many threes is because they were just simply making the ones that they took. It's not so much about firing up 40 threes a game, 45 threes a game, Celtics. It's not about firing up 45 threes, but if you can make them, great. You take more threes and you can make them, that's even better. But if you can't take, if you don't have the shooting team to do that, but you got some guys that can really knock it down and they play well together, just be efficient. You can say that about anything, but just be efficient. And those two guys are very efficient at what they do. So it would make a whole lot more sense for the Bulls, especially if you're trying to build a team, build an identity, you know, continuity, even if you bring DeMar back, it's better to have the two guys that helped, that helped him have his best year. By the way, Zach had that thumb ligament injury, which was messing up his numbers that year. People don't mention that when we discuss Zach Levine. And I, I'm getting sick and tired of us having half-ass politics about basketball players without discussing the entirety of the circumstance around a player, but we're not going to go there. Um, but he put up 25 with a ligament damage in his thumb, and it was going to take like 25 games. I think he was supposed to be good by December 25th, which is, but it was like 25 games for him to actually recover. He had to tape it up and all this other stuff. Yeah, crazy year. But he still gave you like 25 on like 47, 46% shooting and like 37% from three. So imagine what he would do fully healthy. Imagine what he would do with Zoe fully healthy. We've seen him carving up teams in the preseason. And in the games before, then we seen what he could do. It just makes no sense. The guy's already getting paid max money. He's already been there for the longest. He's your most tenured player. He's clearly an all-star caliber, caliber player. You need something to build with. Why not just let him play? Yes, he wants to leave. But give him an opportunity to say, hey, look, man, we'll at least, we can't get rid of BD, but we can at least work with you and let you be the star of the show. We'll put we'll put the ball in his own hands. We'll allow you to get your shots. The offense can run through you. And I think DeMar would be fine with it. Being the second fiddle after he's had to do all this work, lets him save his legs, and then he can still close sometimes. It works best for everybody, especially if you want continuity. Even if you don't, it's better to say, hey, we're going to be a running gun team. We're going to fire a bunch of threes. We're going to get the Zoda ball in transition. We're going to rebound well, and you're going to take off, and whoever gets open takes the shot. But that's all I got. We, need, we really need to stop this nonsense on Zach Levine. Like, if we're going to talk about him, let's really talk about him. He's not as bad as some of y'all are making him, for real.